right, so introduce yourself for us, please. I am Mo Prem Shakur, okay. Thug Life Outlaw, strictly representing. I am Mo Prem Shakur, Thug Life Outlaw, strictly representing. Okay. When did you uh, first meet Napoleon? I first met Napoleon, it was like uh, 90, 94. And now, you know, we were heavy on the road, Pac and I, you know, we were heavy on the road and um, Yak had joined us already in in uh, Oakland and then we came to New York for a visit on some business and um, Yak called up, <laughs> Yak called up Moo and uh, he showed up with like 50 dudes, man. We were at, we were in this little hotel in Manhattan, uh, what hotel was that? I can't remember it, but it was a small hotel. And uh, they're like, yo, Moo here, Moo here, my man Moo here. Y'all can open the door. Moo came in and like 50 dudes came in behind. I'm like, yo, little man is strong out there. But yeah. Well, the, the first time that you met him, what was your what was your impression of him? My first impression of uh, <laughs> Moo was like, he, I like, he was a scrappy little dude. He was little. I mean, you know, Moo was short. <laughs> so, um, and you know, his best friend, Yak, my little brother, is like, uh, you know, tall man and shorty. And, um, I just thought he had a lot of he, he he had a lot of spunk, you know. He was a little man, but he was holding it down, you know. And uh, I I I can I can relate to that being a short guy, you know. Uh, what was the environment like when Pac passed away, and for you? And then how do you think uh, Napoleon specifically? How how did it affect him? Well. Uh, what was the climate like? You mean as far as uh, the music Emotion, business? Energy. Oh. What you all thought was going down. First, give me yours, and then and then tell me what you think how it affected him specifically. Uh, well, me personally, I was I was shelled. I was shelled. I didn't when um, Pac passed. When Pac passed sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. When Pac passed. I was uh, I was shelled. At first, I thought that when I first heard the news, I thought Pac shot somebody else. I like, oh, they got the story wrong. Pac probably popped the nigga. You know what I mean? I know how his temper is, and um, you know I was wrong when I, and I found out. But around that time, Napoleon Muta was um, him, him and Pac were bonding real tough because he, you know, he was amongst the last ones to to join the outlaws. But he he was making his mark, and um, you know, and Pac loved him, and them, them two was bonding. So I, I know it it affected him real real hard. Cause, and if you know Mu, he's a real you know sensitive, um, passionate person. So you know, he felt it hard. What was the reaction at the time? to uh, Gaddafi's death. And again, the same way, uh, how do you think affected Napoleon? Oh man, uh, Gaddafi's death, it was like being in a dream. It was like, it was unreal. Like people were telling us what happened, but it, it, it wasn't sinking in. They're like, no, no, it can't be, no, no, no. You know, um, and we found out about Yak on the the morning of the uh, Pac Memorial. <laughs> that morning is when we found out about Yak. So it was like, you know, the guy was piling a whole bunch on us. And once again, you know, Muta, K Napoleon, um, Yak was his best friend. You know, as far as I knew, that's how I met him. <laughs> You know, that's how I met Mutu Yak, and um, I know that had to hurt. I, I mean, all of us, all the outlaws, you know, we handled it in our own way because it was a lot to handle, and every way 
isn't, you know, cut out for everybody. And um, so everybody was trying, kind of giving each other their space. But I, I knew it was affecting Mo in an, in an immense way because he and Yak were also like brothers and they came up together in New Jersey, you know, the whole New Jersey thing. And um, I, I felt for him, you know. What was what was the feeling uh, after it was discovered who who shot him? Um, the feeling after we found out who who shot Yak was uh, sickness. You know, we were, we were shocked and we were sickened. It was like we were dealing with so much already. It's already a complicated matter, and then to complicate it just a little bit more, you know. And um, it, it was it was it was hell, man, dealing with that, um, dealing with it through the click, dealing with it on the family level. Um, you know, there was arguments, people fought, um, people stopped speaking, and people argued, <laughs> and um, but. You know, we like family. You know, we touch greatness. So when, when you touch greatness, it, it kind of bonds you in a way. So um, through it all, um, you know, we held it together. It, we still civil, you know, amongst each other. Um, after the passing of the two brothers, how do you feel Napoleon came out of it? Um, I feel like Napoleon came out of it. I mean, because I was around him a little bit during that period of time, I saw him struggle, you know. I see, I saw him just, you know, he was heavy in alcohol. He was, you know, and I feel him. And, you know, if you know Moo's history, you know, about his, his family and his parents being killed. And, you know, I was like, man, this dude is dealing with so much. I know I'm dealing with a lot, but I can imagine. You know what I mean? I can imagine how much he's dealing with. Um, you know, so I seen him wild out with the girls, wild out drinking alcohol, getting drunk, fighting. I mean, the whole, um, the whole rebellious part. But then he flipped. He he got an awakening, and um, I believe that's through is Islam. And um, God bless him, more power to him. He's been. Uh, it seems like he's been so much happier, so much at peace. So, and which is such a drastic difference from when I remember him, like just after, you know. So I think that's what it, it took to to put him at peace is God, you know. What were your initial thoughts about uh, Muta becoming a Muslim? My initial thoughts about Mu becoming a Muslim were, well, that figures. <laughs> I mean, uh, Mu is a re very passionate person. Whatever he's getting into, we're going to get into it 100%. He's going to max out. And... Um, and, and then when I, I heard he be, became a Muslim and then he was traveling, going to Mecca, going to Saudi, he was real about it. That's why, you know, that's why I applaud him because he's being real about his. You know, a lot of, a lot of cats be out there faking it to make it. You know, it ain't for me, but I, I got a lot of respect for my dude. You know, that's, you know, that's like my little brother. We, we didn't had our ups and downs, you know, you don't fought, he didn't punch me in the eye, we done, you know what I mean? We've been through it all, but... But now he just shaped up to an outstanding young man, you know? All right, well, that's it. Let me see what else I can ask you. Oh, okay. Um, how, how have you been able to deal with all of your loss and all the challenges and all the cock blocking and all the all the 
all the naysayers that deny you the right to even be a man's brother. How, how do you cope with all of that? How, what's kept you smiling and alive? Um, the one thing that consoles me is that, I mean, there's a few things that console me, and get me through it, but that I know my brother was, he did it his way. He did it like Frank Sinatra, baby. He told you how he was going to do it. He told you how he was going to down, and that's how he did it. You know what I mean? He ain't go out, and, he, and, I, and I love him for that because so many of his fans were, you know, were heartbroken as long, along with his family. We were all heartbroken, but his strength made it easier for his fans and for his family to deal with it, I, I, I think, because he did it his way. And, you know, another thing is that I become more, I realize that I'm blessed because, you know, a lot of people that lost their loved ones, they don't get to see them on a regular basis. They don't remember them on a regular basis. They don't hear their voice on a regular basis. Me, I hear my brother every day. I see him every day. You, you know, somehow, some way, he, he, uh, my cats, my dudes in the street still talk about him, you know, like he relevant because he is relevant. He's still fading all these suckers out here. But uh, anyway, um, um, and the legacy that we put down, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't for nil. You dig? Um, baby bro did his thing. He saw a black president before the rest of us did. Check that out. If, uh, I, I mean, because, you know, we come from a pro-black background, and, you know, it's a no-brainer that uh, uh, Pac would have been uh, for Barack, you know? I would have loved to have seen that, but... Um, you know, all the revolutionaries, all the uh, political prisoners, all the uh, civil rights fighters, all, all of us helped Barack get to where he is. You know, and, and let's not get complacent and just forget they're still political prisoners. My father's doing 60 years. You got Mumia Abu-Jamal, Lennon Peltier. I mean, there's uh, 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 things that everybody's so enlightened about. They see everything now. Them dudes is doing time over. Them dudes locked up over, murdered. I mean, you know. So we, I just don't want people to forget that the brothers locked down.